reading. So today I want to talk about the top eight books that I really liked reading on 2014. So this is basically books that I've read in 2014, not necessarily books that was released in 2014 and then I read it. So I'm sorry if that's what you think this video is, but it isn't. Some of these books are even really, really old. Some of these books came out like the year before 2014. So yeah, I don't think there's one book that came from 2014 and I read it. So I'm just gonna put it out there. These are my opinions about the books. These are my personal thoughts and blahs about these books. So no hate, okay? No hate. So I think I mentioned it before that I have a Goodreads account and there's this reading challenge that they do every year and I join and um, for last year's reading challenge, I actually set it for 50 books. But unfortunately, I only read like 22 books, so I miserably failed. Oh, and just to say to you guys, sorry if I don't have like the hard copy of the book or the physical form of the book because some of these books I read in ebook form, some of them I, I borrowed in the library of the school and you know, I'm not in school right now so I can't really borrow the stuff. But some of it, two of it actually, or three, the other one is missing, so two, are in my possession and they are hard copy physical form things. So the eighth book is Chase Dreams by Lacey Weatherford and Chase Walden. Um, so I really liked Chasing Nikki, which was the first series book thing, and I didn't I didn't know if I liked the sequel. It was kind I mean it was okay, but the first book just, you know, tore my heart apart and Duh. I didn't know how to feel about it. I mean, I was happy that they stuck through with that whole love story thing from the first book. But it was just so confusing. I mean, how how do you even come up with a story like that? I See, my voice is even pitchy because I'm... But I kind of loved it too. The ending was just... It was beautiful. Okay? It was super confusing. But it was beautiful in the end. Okay, so the seventh book is also an ebook. It's called Sisters Insanity by Gail Foreman. And if you don't know me, I'm a huge Gail Foreman fan. And I think that's because of when I read If I Stay and Where She Went. Those books are like my life, okay? Sisters Insanity is a book about like these young women who are mistreated because of their individuality. It's like being different isn't welcomed, which is kind of true. There's so many levels to this book, but something that I didn't really like about it is the adults in the book mainly like the physicians and doctors and stuff like that i just wanted to like what is wrong with you and this book really touched me because you all know that i'm a big individualist thing <laughs> um i believe that the more different you are the more you are yourself i don't know be yourself and even if you are different from everybody else that's the best version of yourself because you're just being you and this book is kind of like that. It sends that message that being different is not, isn't not bad. So the sixth book is of course... I know a bunch of people have read this because the movie came out. And let me just tell you, I actually tried to read it back in 2012 or 2013 because that's when we got this book. And it's a signed copy. <gasps> um, so I tried reading it. I tried reading the first chapter but on the first page itself when um, John Green was talking about cancer and stuff like that. It made me ball tears. Like like just just waterfalls. Um, I think it's because 2012, 2013, that was the year when my godmother had cancer and her cancer was kind of like the same as how John Green described it. And you know, like I, I kind of felt like I was reliving seeing her looking so pale and so thin and just it made me cry because I mean, she's my godmother and I love her so much and I don't want her to be going through that kind of stuff, but then she is and then it's just, just so hard. It was so hard to kind of read it in that kind of detail that John Green writes it in and it's making me cry now because she passed away and I don't want to, you know, pity or anything. Just. <sighs> It's a heavy subject for me. But anyway, I gave this book four stars because I really liked it. Um, it sets off this really awesome reality about cancer and I think that's amazing. And having a little love story in there doesn't hurt either because I'm like, I love romance. I love like lovey-dovey books. So it was, it was awesome. So the fifth book is Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. And there's actually a movie about it in 2014 that I didn't know about. So... This book I actually borrowed from school. I just kind of found it and I read the description and I really liked the plot and stuff. And before you go all, but it's just like Gone Girl. It's kind of different to Gone Girl a little bit 
there's like elements of it that are the same. It is about marriage and fidelity and you know memory sort of because the main character of the story has amnesia so she can't remember what happens you know day to day it's just like 50 first dates but in a more darker sense um so there is a lot of similarities between gone girl and before i go to sleep but i really like before i go to sleep because it was just so thrilling and i love thrilling books i love it when you know you're reading a book and it's like oh my god i just have to know what happens in the next so you're just flipping through the pages and you're like, oh my god! And that's just kind of how I felt about the whole book. I really recommend it, even if you have read Gone Girl or you haven't but you plan to. It's a good book too, okay? Can we just not do the, huh, Gone Girl is better or before I go to name it better? Huh. All these books are different, okay? All these books have a different voice to it. So I kind of look at it in a way where I don't want to compare them because they're different in their own way. And since different is awesome for me i just embrace all those things and just welcome them to the world so the fourth book is the lion the witch and the wardrobe yes chronicles of narnia by c.s lewis we actually own that book but i can't seem to find it i don't know where it is just a little brief history about chronicles of narnia i actually read all of the books already so i just reread them last year because i wanted to get that little fantasy spirit thing and you know before that whole week that i read all the books except for the last battle i don't know why i can't read it maybe it's because of that little phobia i have of things ending it's probably it but yeah that's the only book that i haven't read so far but when i read it for the first time the whole series i didn't include the ones that already had movies because they already had movies so i practically know what happened already um but this time last year i mean when i read it for the whole week i read the ones that had movies and having to read this particular book which was the first movie that came out i regretted every second that i didn't read the book for the first time um the book is exactly the same as the movie there's just of course some parts that weren't mentioned and skipped and stuff like that but the book opened my mind so much to all these other stuff that i didn't know about the line the witch and the wardrobe and it was awesome because it was like it was like you were a child again. It was basically like you were Lucy Pevensey and you were discovering this beautiful magical land for the first time and you're just kind of like, I want to be here for the rest of my life, be the queen, woo! The third book is Die For Me by Amy Plum. So this is kind of like a 2.5 sequel to the sequel, different perspective kind of books. And I love these. I love these. The 0.5 books. I love them. I don't know why, but I love them so much. Um, so this follows uh, Die For Me and Until I Die of the Revenants series. And Amy Plum is also one of my favorite authors ever because of the Revenant series. And Die For Me was one of those books that just kind of like, oh my god, I love it! I wish there was a movie or something! And, um, you know, the rest of the series, I felt the same because it was just a good book after the next. And the characters, you, you love them because they feel so real. So this book, it's in Jules' perspective. So Jules is Vincent's best friend and Jules kind of has a little crush. And... Anyway, I loved being in his head. I loved seeing things from his perspective. He's basically just retelling the story from Die For Me and Until I Die. But it's in his perspective. It's in his voice. So it made it all better because I loved his character so much. He's like the comedic relief. He's like the best friend. He's basically Styles, you know? It was just really nice to see all of his emotions, to feel how he was feeling at the time, to go through what he was going through, and having it to be in a male's perspective, because I love male POV bo books, <laughs> male POV books, it was just, it made it all better. And it's just, a, it, it's a good read if you want to remember all the stuff that happened in the first two books. So I recommend it a lot because it's just, it's basically Styles, guys. So if you love Styles from Teen Wolf, you're gonna love Jules. And if you don't want to read the first two books, this is the book for you. Okay, so the second book is Cemetery Girl by David Bell. Now, this book gives me butterflies in the stomach because when I actually made the review for the book, which you could see in my Goodreads account, mm, just ends, um, David Bell, the author, like officially, liked my review. Ah! Super fangirl about it because just by reading that book, it made me love him as an author. I love the way that he wrote it. I love the way that he addressed this issue. I love the realness that he gave in this fiction story. It's a missing persons kind of story. It's like kidnapping and stuff. Um, I really liked it because, as I said, it was so real. Like, it, it felt like it actually happened to somebody and they're writing about it. I liked the perspectives of being a parent and you have a missing child. I loved, 
the characters. I loved how engaging it was. I loved how real it was. I loved all the little philosophical details about it. I just love it. It's so... Mm, I can't even, man. It's amazing. You have to read it. I mean, you, you just have to. You have to. Please read it. It's awesome. Okay, so the number one book that I read in 2014 is this. This, guys. This gift from the heavens. This, man. This, this book is like everything I want from a book. I don't know where to start about this book. Uh, this is probably my top one favorite book of all time so far. <laughs> and um, I actually got the ebook version of this book first. But I didn't want to read it because I felt like it wasn't worth to read it until I had the hard copy of it. I saved a lot of money, less eating so I can save more money to buy this book. And when I finally bought it, I read it immediately. Finished it in two days and it's the most amazing book I've ever read in my whole entire life. I don't know what to say, how to sell this book to you because it was just amazing. Um, Again, I made a review for this book in Goodreads, and you can just read that, and I hope it, it sells you to read it, because, guys... Oh, and try to get the physical form of the book instead of the ebook, um, because it's so much worth it. Like, the experience of feeling and seeing the images in this book makes it so much real and makes a difference, like a huge difference, to just seeing it in ebook form. Um, the pictures in this book, it, it, it mesh well together with like the story and I don't know how he did that but it's awesome and I just guys you have to you have to okay if you have to read one book from all of the stuff that I recommended this is the book guys promise me I'll read it so there you go guys that's all of the books well not all of the books that's the top eight books that I read in 2014 and I hope you read some of them Thank you guys so much for watching my videos. 44 subscribers, what what? I just wanted to get my excitement out. Anyway guys, see you in my next video. Stay hot um. Forgot to do that, delayed. See you in my next videos guys. Stay hot um, smile always, and spread love. Bye.